Hi, welcome back. So, um, where are we? The last video I made, I said I wasn't feeling well, so I was a little slow. To be honest, I actually got worse after that, so I got next to nothing done. However, since then, I'm starting to feel a bit better, and I've been starting to creep away the car and get put them back into it. So, I've um, been working on the inside, and I've managed to uh, some, get some nice stuff done. So, you ready to see where we are so far? Well, let's go have a look. So, let's bring the camera down. And we have almost one side of the interior done. Uh, as you see, got the panel kit on in here. Uh, the carpet's down, the seat tracks are down, there's some wire in there, some LEDs. I haven't put the door card on yet because I still have to put the lock on the door, which is a lot bigger than the original, so to grind the hole in that. Um, yeah, pretty much got all the bottom done, all the way in. So nice, beautiful layout on this. Uh, some interesting colors um uh i know that the carpet has like a bit of a mixture i don't know a lot it's hard to say now it looks a bit odd because it's more brown than there is actual uh the leather so when the door card gets put on and the seats go in it's going to change completely other than that check out this beautiful wheel so this is this wheel is small believe it or not this is a i want to say it's probably a 13 or 14 inch it actually is quite small, believe it or not, even though it looks like the uh, the Motolita or the uh, the Tourist Trophy, it's actually small. Um, I haven't put all the studs in, all the studs in, I'll just put it on just so I can simply, I want to be able to turn the wheels actually. Um, so, uh, and just to try it out, to see where I need to put, if I need to put a little space around it, because I've never installed one of these wheels, because this comes with a, an odd little hub, like the way it's shaped out and, it's, and it cones up to it as well. So to see, I might have to put a little spacer in there, just because I don't want to rub on the end. So this one's a little. It's supposed to be straight fit, but when does everything a straight fit? So <laughs> um, yeah, it's nice, prime, nice and shiny. Look, okay, you can see me in it. Hey. Uh, so yeah, that was a badge there that was glued on. So this was done this was personally done. Uh, you can't buy it like this. This was uh, uh, personally done. I didn't do it myself. So where else are we? Oh, oh, let me show you this. So, uh, first of all, let me turn the lights on. Because, I'm going to show you the boot end. Because we know, the light in the boot only works when the tail lights are on. So, when I get to that point where it wants to open, let me zoom out a bit. Look at that. Look at this. Beautiful LED lights. And nice finished boot. So I'm trying to get all angles so you can see. Look at that. Beautiful job. Looks absolutely amazing. Um, it's nice having the carpet that actually comes around. Again, the same as the interior, the same as the carpet that comes around. And gives it a nice finish. Uh, so you don't, the spare wheel and all under there. Um, in here, it doesn't make a difference. Like that's, That hasn't been fully finished. But again, all these carpets have the layer in the back, like the marine carpet. So they're all waterproof as well. But uh, yeah, looks absolutely amazing. And I always want to make sure that the light pops off there. So you can see it. Off. On. So it works with the, uh, make sure it works with your regular switch. So, beauty. So, I'm going to turn the headlights off or drain the battery. Um, hey, what's that I see in the corner? I see, I see something different up here. What's, what's that? Oh my God, look at this. What has happened to the SUs? All of a sudden they've been replaced here. Yes, we are going with some triple carbs, some triple DCOEs. Um, yes, some are going to say, oh, they're Webers. They're not actually Webers, um, but they're triple DCOEs. So I was just playing around with the pipe in here. Ooh. So eventually you have to put this in. And most likely I'll run on So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the original fuel pump and put an electric one in just to make sure I have the right um ratio for all three because i don't know i'm sure the original one could probably work but just in case we're going to put an electric fuel pump in so we're going to install up here and then we're going to put a fuel regulator on to come in to uh run our fuel lines still one more to go on and uh, we're going to get some beautiful power out of this so uh yeah that's going to look absolutely fantastic when it's done and it has the old uh, trumpets or bugles whatever you want to call this you can get different style endings for this, so these can come off, and you can get like a K&N filter style that's tall. And I'm sure you can actually, I'm sure out there there's a cold air system that you can actually run one, two, three, 
and then run it all the way down to the front if you really wanted to get more over. But uh, for now, I'll just start to assemble that. Uh, nothing is connected, so yeah. And that's where I am for now. So I'm going to continue on doing the middle. Um, I will throw some video up. Uh, actually, do we? I don't know what video I've already recorded so far. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, other than that, let's do a little bit of high speed and we'll continue to finish the interior here so I can get the back panel on because the wiring is done and I can continue on with this and uh, get some lights in and hopefully a seat in there. So, uh, oh, seat belt as well, a seat belt, that's okay. All right, so um, roll on the high speed. Okay, so um, 
We're onto this piece here, which is heaven's all dusty. Uh, the um, oh, what panel they actually call it? I don't know like what it's called. Uh, the angle piece. Anyway, so usually you get the vinyl and you get the cardboard triangle piece. So what we've uh, this case come like is it's come with the this already glued on. So what I've done is I like folded it to shape. So I'm going to show you a trick to get it to look better here than the original. Because I find when you fold it over, it peels away, it sticks up in the air, and it goes all over the place, to be honest. So as you can see, i got a piece of normal foam, and what I've done is I just stuck it in the back here. And all that is is giving it something to stick to to keep some compression on it. So like the far side, it just when I have it stuck down here, it sticks out. However, I, I'm not just sticking it. I'm going to show you a trick now in a minute. So what I want to do is I want to line it up and I'll line up to where I want it to go. So I'm going to look at the front piece here and follow the edge in here to make sure it's sitting down where I want it or where it's supposed to sit. And that's really it. Once I have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some spray glue in the back here and spray glue in the bottom and I'm going to glue it in. What I will do after that is that's never enough. Even if I glue it here, it's never enough to hold it on. So my trick is when I glue it in, I actually put a little screw in here. So I drew in a little self-tapping screw, and actually keeps that down. And then, now I have enough pressure to pull, and get a nice pull all the way around to get it stuck. And that's how the one on the far side looks nice and straight, because I put a screw through it. So, do you have to? No, like you put a little rivet, it's a little self-tapping screw. Through this piece sticking over, and just into the bottom of the, uh, the inner sill. You won't see it because when I put the carpet kit on, it covers that anyway. So it's going to come right over, so you're never going to see it. But between the foam and the screw, it gives that inside piece that, and to be honest, because it just stops, because every time you stick it, it will just flay out and it looks terrible. So, um, yeah, let's do this, okay? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to glue this on first, where I want it, and I'm going to glue it to the foam. And then glue it in here. Most likely, when I glue it in, it's going to come off anyway. It's going to actually pop over here. However, I'm going to glue it that sort of preset where I want it. The foam I was cutting back a bit because it was the same on the far side. The more I compressed it, it sort of stuck out a little bit. And when I put the panel down, I could almost see the white line. So I removed that and I end up with a, a, a almost perfect finish. So, all right, let's just get this glued on. I don't have to go find my rivet gun. Actually, yeah, let's go find a screw gun. I don't worry if I get glue everywhere. To be honest, it's only glue, it'll be wiped off. All right, so again, I'm gonna step, make sure that this part is lined up with the, uh, where I want it to go first. Just so I get the, so this part ends up being right. I'm gonna push it in, and I'm just gonna hold it. Like I said, this part will stick eventually. Um, especially when I bring this piece around and I glue this around. Um, but for now, I just wanted to hold here. This glue is not too bad. This one doesn't take too long to actually set, which is pretty good. So, so even though it sets, eventually the, the pressure pulls this off. It is what it is. So what I'll do now is, when I get this glue, I'm gonna spray this side of it and just glue the semicircle. I'm not gonna do any edges, I just want enough to hold it down. All right, here's the waiting game now. Let's wait here. You may find different vinyls stick a little better or, or worse. Um, be mindful as well is that I'm, uh, I start sticking some stuff through the day. I was awful. The humidity was terrible. So the glue wasn't working great at all. Alright, 
So I'm guaranteeing I'm gonna let this go. So it's peeling out. It's just sheer pressure on it, which I know it's gonna happen. All right, so now I'm gonna get my self tapper and I'm gonna get a screw for that. Now I have to go get the drill. So I'll be back in one second. Let me go get the drill. Okay, so back with the drill. So this is stuck in here. And what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this one of these, uh, just a self tapping screw. You can go with any style if you want. Uh, what I will do first though, is I'm gonna punch a little hole in here because the screw, when it goes in there, sorry, my head's in the way. Because right, when the screw goes in there, what happens is it spins around when, it, when you go to uh, self tap it, and it just churns this around in a circle. So, Oop. there's no uh, any one great place to do this other than somewhere that's simply going to hold it down. So that screw is going to hold this down and it's going to hold this it's not plastered in but it's going to hold it. i know it's not going to pop off and this is glued around here so now what i can do is i can finish off these little edges and put a bit of glue and tidy up and have this sitting in so sticky fingers everywhere One piece at a time. I put this same thing. I'm going to uh, just cut it. That that allows it to sit in. It was easy ones doing the other way because it was, was right-handed. Just be careful when you're doing this as well, that you don't uh, scratch the paint. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect when it comes into the far end, when it goes in, because you're, uh, you're going to have your door seal going there, the flux. So if you have something to push it in with, it's great. I use a small tool. If you do have any excess like this left over, just slice it off. So you can see what I'm doing actually. So. Show them this, sorry. Right, 
Okay, I'm not worried about getting every bit in there perfect because like I said, the, the flux is gonna sit in there. And I wanna leave enough of a gap for it to actually fit in as well. All I need to get is this smooth and just along the edge. Don't worry about doing it there. And make sure you leave a gap, like I said, for it to sit in without a pile driving all the way out. So. A tiny little piece I want to take off up here. the blade is the right way around that's the old one <laughs> nice sharp exacto is what you need for this Again, safety first, trying to rip your fingers open. Now a little spot here. I'll put a bit of glue on. This up here is fixing in here. Again, I'm not too worried because the door car is going to take this up and the flux is going to come in here. It's important to have a, oh, go up a bit more on the camera. It's important to have this part down and this part down. You see the inside as well. So as long as all three of them, these, these three sections are done, like I said, the flux is going to go in here, you're not even going to see it. So it's going to mash in there anyway, so. That's it. That's it. So, see, it looks nice and clean. Nice and neat. And more importantly, uh, like I said, don't worry about all the spray glue. When I put the inner carpet on here, you're not even going to see this. Now you're going to see it's a nice, uh, nice great view. Exactly like you see over there. So when you put the pieces on it, you don't even see it. The carpet butts up to it, and you get a nice little perfect finish. If you wonder why it sticks out a tiny bit down here, because I still have the bolt to go in the bottom, and that will pull the last piece in. There is a screw you can put in as well. So uh, the bottom of the, the B post, or the uh, wheel arch one, there is a little screw. You can actually screw put a screw in as well, as well as the bolt that goes in the bottom. But that's optional. Some put it in, some don't. I don't because then it's one less screw to see. All right, that's it. So uh, let's continue on with uh, putting the wheel arch kit in.
Hi, welcome back again. So, getting a bit more uh, interior done. So, um, I managed to fit the center console piece, which to be honest was an absolute nightmare because it didn't come with any hardware, no instructions, there's nothing on the inside, no flat pieces to grip onto. So, it took me a while to figure out how to mount it, and I figured out a way of doing it. So, I wouldn't recommend anybody else to do the same because it's not exactly solid. It's, it's in there, it's not going anywhere, but uh, there's no grey hardware for it. Anyway, uh, so I've got the seatbelt on. Uh, as you can see, this one is more like, uh, it's uh, retractable. But this piece here is more like a lap belt style. So uh, it has a nice, um, nice Triumph logo on it. TR, so that's pretty nice. So uh, that will attach to this. Um, again, the hardware that came with that wasn't the greatest. Um, yeah, I wanted to do more on the door. I wanted to put the door locks on, but the door locks are not something funny about them. So I had to go look at them in case. I think I might have ordered the wrong one. So before I commit to that, uh, see, so I've been just plugging away on the inside here. It's taking a while. So this is all down. I have here most of it done. Uh, I can take these clips off and I'll trim that across so I can put the door fuzz down. But I have to wait because this inner panel here I can't put on yet. Because I have to fix the uh, the three screws for the soft top. They were broke and somebody has after, has uh, riveted in. But you see what I was doing is I was putting these in. Which is the self the rivet um, nut rivets. But unfortunately the gun decided to give up the ghost and break. So uh, I'm waiting for two more, so therefore I got stuck there. Otherwise, I would have need to get that part done. I would have been able to hold, put the rear panel across. So that's why I moved on to uh, doing some seat belts and doing that. So uh, yeah, that's it. So coming along, I look a little better now when I clean all this mess up. Um, believe it or not, this actually has a working USB at the back. So I had to spend a bit of time. Um, I had the wires there for it, but uh, it does actually have a... USB port. Well, it's a USB. It has a what do you call it, a cigarette lighter? This does not open. That's just solid. I wish it did open. At least I could have had something to go down into, like most of them do. At least have something flat to screw all the way down. At least would have gripped me into something. But yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. So um, bit of a mess, but not a bit of a mess. So what I done was actually I haven't showed you is the seat tracks here. So I've um, done away with the glue because I had the glue. Uh, Believe it or not, I had to put a tiny bit of glue onto this because when you pull the handbrake up and down, the drink container moved up and down. So I put like a literally a dab on an O ring just to keep it down. Um, the seat tracks here. So these are the ones that's going to go into. So one, two, three, four. However, it's not straightforward. You're wondering, there's also a, the original screw is sticking up there, as you can see. So what I've done is. I've taken the seat track, I've bored a hole in them, the back of it. So I've marked where that is, I've bored a hole, so that stud will slip into there. Now, will it fully slip in? Well, probably not, because the carpet's going to be over as well. But the point is, though, it allows the seat track to go down further, because now the, the nut can come up. I did practice that with an old one. I've done the exact same thing. I drilled a hole in it to make sure it all lined up to went down flat. But again, depending on the carpet... I just wanted to have that, that when the carpet pulls and it does go down, that at least that little nut there will go into this little hole and make it sit down nicer. So again, it's just so I can move the seat back as far as physically possible. Uh, do you as much distance? Because it's always people with long legs that drive them. Uh, other than that, if Doug was watching, I put some double-sided tape and put your little uh, whiskey cork up there. Uh, I think it's a whiskey cork. That's only double-sided tape, though. Well, it looks nice, actually. It's a nice finish. I was going to use that as actually a door pull for the uh, glove box, but I looked at it, and it just, it just didn't look right. So, uh, like when I closed, I didn't like look right having a big one here. I think it looked better in here, personally. But again, it's only double-sided tape. I can always move it. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right. So, uh, that's it for today. Back to it again tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, again, thanks for watching. Any comments, questions, concerns, give me a shout. If you have any questions on how i done the uh, panel kit, let me know. I was going to do a more in-depth one, but to be honest, I'm behind time. So I saw if that's why I've done a, uh, 
a, a quick one uh, in the way of high speed. But I will get to another car and I will do an actual in-depth way of actually doing it other than just the uh, the corner piece. But as you can see, yeah, again, see what I mean? So it's nice and flush, nice and smooth. And then when the next panel comes down, it's going to run down here and it's going to look amazing. So, uh, yeah, little tricks. All right, again, thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next part.